Welcome to NTN Nightly. I am Janelle Norville. This edition Stop Stories. The Ministry of Commerce reawakens the St. Lucian palette to local products. The NFTO receives over a million dollars from government to meet outstanding payments to farmers and institutional support for the CMOS subsector increases. The Ministry of Commerce, International Trade, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, in collaboration with other public and private sector partners, on Tuesday officially launched its rebranded by local campaign dubbed Love St. Lucia. The goal of the campaign, according to the Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Commerce, Industry, Investment, Enterprise Development and Consumer Affairs, Sophia Henry, is to build resilience in the St. Lucian economy by encouraging hobby farming, maximizing the potential of local industry, improving consumer awareness, and increasing the domestic market share of our local manufacturers and service providers. This campaign serves to drive an increase in sales revenue and profits of local manufacturers and service providers. This will result in employment creation and economic stabilization and ultimately have a multiplier effect in our local economy. The campaign will also inform manufacturers and service providers of the varying needs and preferences of the consumer and further assist them in responding to those needs. We are determined to ensure that all sectors benefit from this campaign. An important feature of the campaign is to encourage households to grow more of what they eat and share the surplus. The Permanent Secretary indicated that it is also important to increase the consumption of Senusian goods and services by visitors. Irrespective of the purpose of the visit, Henry explained that visitors must not only fall in love with the island and its people, but its goods and services as well. More importantly, she noted, is to ensure that solutions support that which is local. My ministry is of the firm view that the success of this campaign will depend greatly on one, the involvement of all stakeholders, and two, a change in mindset of our people towards appreciating and consuming what is ours. Our responsibility as a stakeholder is to collaborate in enhancing our business environment to enable the entrepreneurial culture to thrive through this campaign. We remain focused on providing, on promoting, sorry, and building an entrepreneurial culture throughout the breadth of St. Lucia. The ministry remains confident that supporting local businesses, especially during these unprecedented times, will result in increased stimulation of the economy and more money becoming available to develop St. Osha. The Buy Local campaign was first launched on November 25, 1998, when the Ministries of Commerce, Agriculture and Tourism, along with private sector entities such as the St. Osha Chamber of Commerce and St. Osha Industrial and Small Business Association, came together in a sure solidarity and support for the manufacturing sector with the aim of bringing awareness to locally manufactured products and services. From the Government Information Service, Lisa Joseph reporting. The Ministry of Agriculture has presented the National Fair Trade Organization, NFTO, with more than $1 million to meet outstanding payments to farmers. Anisia Antoine has the details. As part of an ongoing initiative to support farmers who may have been affected due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives made an official check presentation of approximately $1.4 million to the National Fair Trade Organization, NFTO. The contribution will specifically assist with the shortfall in payments between the organizations of Winfresh and the NFTO. Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Agriculture, Barrymore Felicier, explained that the initiative is designed to aid farmers who have not received payments to enable them to provide for their families and continue their agricultural exploits. This payment between NFTO and the government of St. Lucia 
is indeed part of our COVID-19 response program and, and has begun and is the first initiative under the Department of Agriculture under this, this COVID response program. We are pleased to have here today the representatives of NFTO to hand over and to ensure that this support is received, well received by the farmers to provide for the inputs and their livelihoods. The chairman of the National Fair Trade Organization, Eustace Monrose, expressed gratitude to the government of St. Lucia for their continuous support. And the government has again delivered, responded to our cry and plea, and is now making available another million dollars, which as I've indicated earlier, we are very thankful for. Now this million dollars will only cover at least it will cover the eight weeks, I'm hoping, because I think NFT has to do some beefing up. Because right now we owe the farmer $1.2 million. Well, the exact figure would be $1,227,876 for the eight outstanding weeks. The Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, encouraged farmers to find ways to reduce production costs as well as increase the quality of their products. We are high price producers. But notwithstanding the high price that we are on the market, there's a demand for our bananas and that's what's keeping us going. That was giving us the motivation as a government to continue to give support to the banana industry. But one of the things that I believe that we have, or the NFTO and the farmers have control over, is to how they can reduce the cost of production. That's one. It's their responsibility. It's not a government responsibility. It's not the PS or the minister's responsibility for farmers to reduce the cost of production. And it's also the farmer's responsibility to make sure that they produce good quality bananas. And whilst we can overcome the high cost of production, and as a government, um, under the leadership of Prime Minister, coming out of the trip we had in the UK, agreed for us to go on a campaign. And we have finalized the, 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 the program, as far as the campaign is concerned, both locally and the UK, to promote our bananas as a, a gourmet banana, which we believe can, of course, cause people to gravitate towards our bananas. The Minister for Agriculture reaffirmed the government's commitment to assisting farmers in St. Lucia. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The strengthening of social protection systems formed a key part of the budget presentation by Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, the Honorable Alan Chasley, as he announced several measures to bring some relief to the most vulnerable in our society. Among the actions the Prime Minister announced was that the government would reduce the electricity bills of qualifying households from between $50 and $100 per month. This will be done through the reduction in electricity fuel surcharge for a six-month period, which is expected to generate savings. The Public Assistance Cash Transfer Program is being expanded from 2,600 households to 3,600 households. The Prime Minister also announced an increase in the Child Disability Grant from $200 to $300, an increase in the grant for persons living with HIV from $100 to $200, and an increase in the grant for children in foster care from $200 to $300. Now, in stimulating the economy, government is making available U.S. $3.1 million to provide blended loan grant assistance to small businesses. The assistance packages will range from $5,000 to $25,000 to micro and small enterprises with a focus on food security and digital technologies. This will be provided through the St. Lucia Development Bank and will benefit between 1,200 and 1,500 enterprises. There is also the provision of low-cost financing to meet working capital requirements of the small micro-business sector affected by COVID-19. An allocation of $5 million EC dollars will be administered by the St. Lucia Development Bank. 350 people are expected to benefit. The government has also granted a waiver of taxes on interest earnings of financial institutions from loans to micro-enterprises. Mr. Speaker, the intention of this initiative is to encourage our financial institutions to provide needed capital to small and micro enterprises through approved financial products for a period of three years, commencing July 2020. 
EC 3.5 million has been allocated to this initiative. Provision of a half a million to build fund to capitalize this institution to respond to the needs of micro business sector. Mr. Speaker, we recognize in these times a number of skilled persons are out of employment and desirous of starting a business. These resources are meant to provide initial startup capital for such individuals. Commercial and residential landlords are also due to benefit. A 50% waiver of commercial property taxes for the period 2019 to 2020 to landlords who extend moratoriums of a minimum of 20% of monthly rental charges for a period of three months covering either April to June or July to September 2020. This, Mr. Speaker, is intended to support tenants affected by the slowdown in business activity. But, Mr. Speaker, we have not forgotten those in rented accommodations. We propose offering a tax deduction to landlords of 20% of the monthly rental value for a period of six months. In effect, Mr. Speaker, a tenant who pays a monthly rent of $1,000 may now have their rent reduced to $800 and the landlord can claim an amount of $200 per month for that period. This and other measures are part of the Economic Recovery and Resilience Plan as St. Lucia mitigates the effects of COVID-19. The plan will be launched in the coming weeks. The Permanent Secretary in the Department of the Public Service says COVID-19 has propelled the government to think differently about the way it conducts business and delivers services to the public. The government, she said, needs to remain open-minded, objective, innovative and nurture innovation. In an article from the World Economic Forum, working from home was a luxury for the affluent before coronavirus. Not anymore, as social distancing protocols due to COVID-19 have caused more employees to work from home than ever before. Permanent Secretary in the Department of the Public Service, Peggy Ann Sudat, believes that the public service needs to be more open and receptive to the new modalities for doing business. COVID-19, she said, provides opportunities for a blended approach to work. Sometimes I think we think of COVID like something that has happened or something that we know will end by a particular period of time. We really don't know. So we must, we must put measures in place to ensure that we're able to deal with any situation that arises. And not only COVID, but there are a number of other situations we may not have envisaged right now, but that will hit us just as hard as COVID did. Health and safety issues such as mold, air quality and other environmental concerns constantly plague the public service, forcing government to increase its operational cost in providing alternative workspaces. P.S. Sudat says, due to COVID-19, public service managers have realized the productivity benefits of teleworking. We've seen many ministries adopting a blended approach to work and they have reported very high productivity levels. We understand that not many people are able to work from home for one reason or the other, um, but it should not stop us from identifying what can be done, how it can be done in different ways to achieve the same result. Government recently launched its digital platform called DigiGov. Minister for Economic Development, Transport and Civil Aviation, Honorable Guy Joseph, is hopeful that the digital economy will lead to increased productivity gains and radically change the way we work. Government has been stuck in the stone age when it comes to the use of technology. Basically, the number of times I had to travel to meetings overseas, COVID forced us into a situation where the same meetings that we could have had, virtual meetings, we were not having them today. All the meetings are taking place on Zoom. And you are still getting the work done. So, I believe that where we are going with this is something that should be welcome, that the people of St. Lucia would get a much more efficient service. The minister also highlighted the economic impact of the 8 a.m. rush hour commute, which he termed the crawl hour. 
with many man hours lost in traffic. To this, the permanent secretary said, it is time to think out of the box or even stand on it. The discussion needs to start because it's happening all over the world. We're speaking of digitization and, you know, digital transformation and so on. Is it necessary to, to like you said, you know, come through that rush hour or the crawl hour to, to work? And, um, you know, when these things could easily be done from home, we are asking our clients to do it from home. Can we do it from home? We need to start the discussion. We need to talk about it. She stated that this paradigm shift in alternative work arrangements comes with its own fears, concerns and pushback, as some supervisors and employees still believe the best way to monitor and get maximum output is to be physically located within the office. For the National Competitiveness and Productivity Council, Glenn Simon reporting. Strides are being made in the CMOS subsector from an increase in farmers to market penetration and consumer demand. We hear more about the institutional support to the sector in this report. Due to the rise in popularity of CMOS on the international markets, St. Lucia is experiencing an increase in demand for CMOS cultivation. Subsequent to the meeting held with the CMOS farmers from the community of Opicon, officials from the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives tested the CMOS plots in the south of the island. Minister for Sustainable Development and Parliamentary Representative for Mikud North, Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabat, stressed on the importance of economic empowerment and reassured the government's support towards assisting the CMOS farmers. We are now at the juncture where we must look at issues of regulation because there's a mad rush into CMOS farming. How do you protect existing farmers? How do you demarcate the farms? Um, what other assistance, technical assistance we can give to ensure that perhaps they can realize more, uh, greater yield per line? <laughs> because we saw the lines. Is, is there a sturdier line that they can use? So we are now forced to look at uh, CMOS um, more seriously. I must say the Ministry of Agriculture has always demonstrated a great level of interest in what Mr. Bonaventure and his, his group have been doing here in Poilin, and I'm very um, grateful for that assistance and technical guidance. But evidently, given that this is fast becoming the new goal, Mm -hmm. that we must move very swiftly to regulate the subsector. Minister for Agriculture, Fisheries, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, explained that with the growing demand for CMOS, the Ministry of Agriculture is committed to assisting with the issues currently being faced. We, the leadership of the Ministry felt it was important for us to go on the ground, to have a first an appreciation as to what um, was told to us and to see how we can come up with solutions um, to remedy the problems. Um, so it was really an education for, for all of us that um, from the ministry because CMOS, I must say, um, while there's great potential, we have to nip the problems as early as possible. Um, so we were here to meet with the respective groups, to meet with the farmers and to I mean, go out there and see how they are uh, engaged in the cultivation of that, 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 that crop. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph stressed on the importance of structure and standards to ensure the quality of the product does not become compromised. The mere fact that there's a demand for our CMOS, we don't want anybody just to go and buy CMOS and go and sell it out there. There must be standards, we must keep the standards. So in, in, in doing this, we also have to see how we can regularize, regularize the, the, the exporters, right? Because it could be anybody who's going to buy CMOS from a, a, some, a, some, or someone, you don't know if the person is a bona fide CMOS producer, and to go and sell overseas or sell it locally. So. We're not only looking at the question of production, we're not only looking at the question of um, putting measures in place as it pertains to those producing it, but we're also looking, we have to look at the entire chain. We have to look at the, the, um, the exporters, we have to look at the processors, so that is their systems in place, the procedures in place where they can engage, everybody can engage each other, so the records are clear, because that's the only way I believe, or one of the only ways I believe we can really curb pretty lastingly. 
The site visit to the CMOS plots in Poile and Savants Bay took place on Wednesday, June 17, 2020. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson with the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Coronavirus? I am worried, Gasser. It's only old people dying from that. Hold up. Being young does not mean being safe. Yes, it's true that the elderly are at higher risk, but anyone can get the virus. The effect is even worse if you have a chronic condition like hypertension, heart disease, lung disease, and diabetes, or weakness in your immune system. If you are living with these conditions, be extra careful. Wash your hands with soap and water. Use hand sanitizer with at least 60% alcohol when hand washing is not possible. Avoid touching your face. Take steps to boost your immunity through proper nutrition, exercise, rest, and take your medication as prescribed. Limit being around people who have flu symptoms, even close family members. Our health is in our hands. Together, through simple actions, we can stop the spread of coronavirus. This message was brought to you by the Bureau of Health Education of the Ministry of Health and Wellness. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Merci au temps général. Monsieur, Madame, le département qui est responsable pour l'information en gouvernement, c'est le CGIS et la télévision nationale, PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle à Creole. Posé au Primus Hutchinson. En commencement, nouvelle nous aujourd'hui. Attention, c'est l'investissement en secteur touristique qui, le Premier ministre Honorable Alain Chasney, a adressé durant la présentation BG 2020 pour 21 semaines passées. Premier ministre Chasney fait public la comprendre que le sens pays pourrait une grande augmentation des développements touristiques plus tard à l'année ici. Premier ministre l'a avoué que dans ces projets, il déjà trouvé annoncé avant, à quel concept, mais pourquoi commencer la construction Il dit que ça se passe que le système est l'autre a fait état dit commencement de ces projets. Le Premier ministre l'a expliqué que pendant ce gouvernement qui a facilité l'événement, pour l'année investissement touristique, mais c'est le secteur privé qui est responsable pour faire investissement ça là. Alors, c'est huit ans que ce projet ça là se pense. C'est à cause de yo qui est responsable pour ces investissements, à manière yo qui a changé pour yo. Alors, le gouvernement n'a pas une pièce contrôle de ça. Premier ministre Chasney déclare que le gouvernement a gardé pour grand progrès l'année ça là en développement de ces divers projets. Projet hôtel, Sarathin, and business leisure, courtyard Marriott, construction hotel sala, qui occupé presque 42 pieds carrés en face de notre business après de Serafé. Hotel sala qui a été 9 étages et qui a été aussi 140 chambres, swimming pool et l'autre plaisir l'autre à faire comme ça, facilité. C'est le premier ministre là, pour j'ai déjà trouvé approuvé à bas condition et qui a coûté 42 millions de dollars américains. Plan pour Pearl of the Caribbean, qui a eu 150 chambres qui ont été bâti en beau séjour en vieux fort. Hôtel Sala, qui a eu un casino, une école pour conduire et titre des affaires touristiques à faire à parmi l'autre. Le Premier ministre Chasney a annoncé qu'il était à Jamaché pour commencer à travailler à ce projet à Canals, à Mikou, et qui a coûté 300 millions de dollars. La compagnie Kawat a commencé à bâtir un projet nouveau qui a eu une place pour jouer golf et ni place pour la famille, ça c'est charme et les individus aussi. Construction, construction des restaurants Soleil Couché à Delce Choisey, c'est pour ça que c'est l'année ici. Le Premier ministre l'a annoncé aussi le projet As de Sable, j'ai aussi fait approuver, approval en principe pour que ça a gagné des hôtels et place des résidents. Le gouvernement, c'est le ci en bas du département des affaires agricoles, si il y a un chèque à valeur de 4 millions de dollars pour assister les femmes et les cultivateurs qui ont pour côté de trouver le paiement pour faire des vannes. Pour qu'ils la vie tant présent, ça n'a pas été fait. La présentation de la a fait en bas programme de maladie de corona pour assister et aider à soulager les femmes. Dans la présentation de la semaine passée, chef de l'organisation National Fair Trade, 
NFTO, Mr. Justice Monroe, we must see a French assistant to the hot government of this country, and we must see a French assistant to the hot government of this country, and we must see a French assistant to the hot government of this country, and we must see a French assistant to the hot government of this country. So, qui te sala, yon sala, weste pour un cadeau pour faire ma vie. Yon fwa kon gadi, nou vle wi mesye, menis la, ek ministry la, PS la, ek lot moun ki fè tout e fwa pas, mou sa zi pa da ba ageze, pikos yon sa budget pour de kwa pase, ek yon teni pou fè an chay de mach, ek pou fè y posib pou nou trape la, yon sala, pou nou ba y fwa ma pas, yon ka santi sou fons lan, fwa ma ka espiyansi a da pa minite ya. Minister of Agriculture, Agriculture, and we have Ezekiel Joseph, we have to say that the farmers continue to receive good assistance, as you can continue to produce figs. We have to say that the government has been able to produce a million dollars, and we have to say that the farmers have been able to produce a million dollars. We have to say that the government has been able to produce a million dollars, and we have to pay the farmers to produce. Um, the last meeting or board meeting three semaines passé and the commitment is to be and for me, I have that this association is not at least Winfresh ka, from this semaine that passé ka to pay ka, ka farmers um, NFT you are the one you do to figure out for this semaine so which means that um, no question if we have to pay we don't have any situation that Winfresh um, ka, ka, ka do NFT you are and for me, I see that um, the fact that farmers can lie on, um, on a timely basis, you can use a cotton to produce and you can use a cotton to produce for me. The Ministry of Affairs Agricole, Mr. Honorable Ezekiel Joseph, has been able to make a presentation of a check for 4 million dollars for NFTO and the situation of the farmer. The price of petrol is going to change in the price of the international price. Pour un détail pour LPG 2022 et 100 livres, j'ai changé. Pour un détail pour gasoline, kérosine et diesel, rester à la même chose. Ce changement a commencé le 29 à mois de juin 2020. Pour la gasoline, rester même, ça c'est 10 dollars et des chlins de go, 10 sous par litre, et bien 11 dollars et des chlins 4 sous par gallon. Pour la kérosine, rester même aussi, ça c'est 1 dollar et des chlins de go. 4 goudes sous par litre, et bien 7 dollars et 7 goudes sous par gallon. Pour le diesel, c'est même toujours, ça c'est 10 dollars et 1 chlin 3 go par litre, et bien 10 dollars et 1 chlin 10 go par gallon. C'est l'un des 20 livres là, c'est sorti 25 dollars et 3 chlin 5 go pour 27 dollars et 10 sous par cylinder. C'est l'un des 22 livres là, c'est sorti 28 dollars et 1 chlin 8 go pour 29 dollars et des chlins 11 go des sous par cylinder. Cylinder yon sa livre la rose est sorti yon 144 dollars et 4 noues pour yon 155 dollars et 3 chlins 10 go des sous par cylinder. L'autre annoncement a sous prix pétrole qui a fait l'édit le 20 en mois de juillet. Et c'est comme ça nous retrouvons votre nouvelle nous. Mon grand monsieur, autant pour qu'il y ait des messieurs, madame, mon grand monsieur, une invitation pour que je puisse me considérer comme ça fait la vie, l'un a posé trois l'autre. Nouvelle à quoi la présent, mon café pour cette journée. Merci à Pearl Primus. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.